Um, bon dia, good morning. Um, as you may note, I'm very sick and my voice is very bad and very low, so I try to speak slowly so you can understand my bad English and my bad voice. Um, <coughs> I, today I'm, I'm going to, to talk about <coughs> our experience at the new song, <coughs> which is the uh, Núcleo de Pesquisas em Sonologia Research Center on Sonology at the University of Sao Paulo. And um, basically I, I will talk a little bit about, uh, a few words about uh, the term sonology itself. And then uh, I'll try to show two strategies that we have been using at the Nusson to gather people from different areas uh, to develop research and artistic creation at the center. And uh, finally, if we, we have time, I'll show a couple of examples of uh, our artistic production. So, <coughs> uh, well, this is the overview of the talk. Uh, few words about sonology uh, because <coughs> I want to say something about it because it has to do with the motivation we had we have at the Mousson. Uh Sonology is a kind of strange term. Sometimes I think it's an ugly term, especially in Portuguese. But uh, the, the history of the, the inclusion of this term in Brazil uh, goes back to 1994 when we hosted the, the first Brazilian uh, symposium on computer music. At that time, uh, a bunch of people interested in, me in different areas such as computer music, electroacoustic music, acoustics, musicology, uh, engineering maybe. They gathered together and they, they, they formed this uh, the Nucom, which has nothing to do with Nusson. They sound similar, but they are completely different. The Nucom was an informal uh, <coughs> association um, who, that helped to um, uh, organize uh, the symposiums and helped to gather. Uh, different people <coughs> from different backgrounds uh, around the same uh, interests. And um, <laughs> of course, it, uh, it was, uh, at the beginning, it was a very friendly environment. And uh, I think it's, it was a very important uh, association for the development of, of, for the growing up or the starting of uh, research um, in the fields of computer music and electroacoustic music in Brazil. But of course, when you put so many people with so many different interests and backgrounds uh, on the same place, um, after some time they just start fighting for their own interests. And <coughs> so at some point, um, we saw like a, a split uh, people who were more uh, interested in computer music and more technical <laughs> aspects of uh, research, they uh, start to think about a new configuration of Nucom, and another group of people who were more involved with uh, less technical, um, um, more conceptual and uh, analytical questions of uh, questions of music, they, they start thinking about designing a new field for them. So there are kind of split between technical and more reflexive or compositional uh, interests. And uh, in two two 2005, at Tampon, which is the conference that is starting, started growing up and um, new people arrived to the group and uh, in 2000, well, uh, this kind of informal group of people, group of colleagues interested in doing research on sound and music, <coughs> uh, these people decided to form this new song, which is Research Center of Phonology, Nucleo de Pesquisas em Sonologia. 
Uh, today it has, has a floating population, but it has about 30 to 40 people involved from different areas. Most of them are musicians, most of them belong to the um, um, graduate program uh, on music at the University of Sao Paulo, but some of them come from computer sciences, uh, engineering, uh, sometimes from the visu visual arts or uh, drama or things like that. <coughs> Basically, uh, I would say the ideology of the group is that um, we try to, to make the connection between music, art and science. Just because we are in the university, we are a research group, but a research group interested in doing art. So. Uh, one of our challenges is to create strategies to do art and music together. Um, and <coughs> as a guideline, I would say we are always interested in this experimental approach, which I will explain a little bit later. So it is a, maybe um, The, the main goals of the, the group, integration of artistic production, technological research, and critical reflection in a unified process. The creation of collective artistic works focused on uh, an experimental uh, perspective, and I would say this would be the, the main <coughs> guideline of the group. Uh, the blurring of the boundaries between academic institutions institutional environment and informal production. Uh, part of the work is to take what we do at the, in the university, inside the university, outside the university, so make a dialogue uh, between academic and uh, non-academic <coughs> uh, fields. <coughs> and uh, the addressing of sound studies issues through an interdisciplinary uh, approach. One of the main challenges of the group was definitely to create a collective sense. And uh, when I was preparing uh, the, the presentation, I started looking uh, <coughs> at the production of the group. Uh, and uh, I was amazed by, by the diversity of talks uh, we are including right now. So just to... Um, <coughs> Looking, uh, to looking at the, less, uh, the, the production or the researches that uh, I've been doing in the last two or three years, uh, I try to divide it then in like, different talks. So we have a part that's more like sound studies itself, more philosophical, uh, experimental uh, approach to music and sound arts. <coughs> So, for example, the first uh, work is about circuit bending. The second is about the use of uh, digital instruments in an experimental scene uh, of Brazilian music. The third one is related to gambiarra and sonic experimentalism. Gambiarra is a word that I think we have only in Portuguese. I don't know if someone ha know how to translate it. But it's like when you improvise with your means. Uh, in a very empirical way, so you do what you have to do. Huh? Do it yourself. Yeah, it's, it, it's quite related to the do it yourself approach. Uh, but it's something that is very related to Brazilian culture. Um, the other one is about music, which is a, a, a series of works we have done inside the group. Uh, the thesis of Lilian Campesato, uh, who is here, which is a kind of philosophical approach to the idea of noise, not only in music, but uh, in culture in general, and <coughs> work about silence. OK, I'm not going through all the, the work, but uh, then there is um, a bunch of works which are related more to computer, interactive music, or things like that. Uh, real time audio processing, uh, inter interaction between music and theater, um, sound non linear techniques of sound synthesis, etc. 
And then we are working a lot with this idea of mobile music, internet music, or using the internet as an uh, environment for creating music, <coughs> uh, using mobile platforms to create new forms of uh, producing music or sound arts. Um, then there are, since we are working very strong, strongly in the idea of performance, there are many people working with the relationship between music and other, other <coughs> things like uh, drama, visual arts, and things like that. So it's a, a something that is very popular, I would say, in, in the group. We have a, a, a colleague of mine, Rogério Costa, many of you may know him. Uh, has a, a, a very important work here in Brazil in free improvisation or uh, developing strategies. So they, he has a he coordinates a group for almost ten years called Orchestra Hunt, who uh, has a, an extensive work on the uh, subject of free improvisation. <coughs> and then multimedia, audiovisual, uh, more technical aspects of multimedia audiovisual, um, something that is kind of lowering now, but uh, acoustic um, oralization and spatialization, which actually is, is from where we started uh, more than 10 years ago. So the, the, the problem is how to connect all, all this uh, diversity of uh, themes and subjects and people and uh, for, for a long time we, we, we thought about doing specific projects that we could put out these people together and it actually it's never worked very well because <coughs> it's difficult to put the composer to talk to a computer scientist and make them to agree uh, on the goals and the ways of doing something. <coughs> but after some time we, we perceived that um, putting artistic productions as a center point of the research would more appealing to different people coming from different backgrounds. So that's what we try to, we, what we are trying to do right now. Um, taking the, the artistic productions uh, as, uh, I would say, a cat catalyst uh, aspect of the research, uh, because actually we saw that everybody in the group could be from the computer science department, from engineering department, from music department. They act, were actually interested in do doing something with art. So instead of building like almost artificial subjects of research, we decided to invert the process and uh, build performances, collective creations, installations and things like that and invite people from those different areas to contribute with their knowledge. So usually they have their own PhD, master, uh, postdoc research project and then take part of their time to contribute or to work with us in uh, a specific artistic uh, project. Uh, so most of the works uh, have been done collectively, which is another challenge, because actually in art usually we are not prepared to work uh, in groups, uh, to share creation to share the authoring of uh, artworks. So most of the works are, are, are collective creations. It could be like 30 people working in a performance or maybe three people working in a small and specific project. <coughs> um, and uh, what, what we try to, to get is the engagement of each member of those subgroups of the nuclear uh, to uh, develop their own part of uh, every work. So I think I, I, I will show 
some images and videos, so I can stop talking a, li a little bit. Uh, so this is the first uh, main performance we did in a collective way. It was uh, actually it was presented here at this not not here this this room, but at this building um, at the, the theater, and it was called Por Trás das Coisas uh, in two, back in 2010, and it involved 42 people on stage. So. <coughs> Something that w would be impossible to do outside the university because, first of all, we would not be able to pay for the two artists to work <coughs> during, let's say, six or seven months to create and perform. And also, we could not uh, afford all the equipment and the research that we have to develop to, to do the, the, the performance. So we did it uh, as a collective work. Many people. Uh, uh, helped us, uh, Daniel helped us, helped us with the setup of the equipment and lights, with Fluminense, uh, landed the sound systems, and etc. <coughs> and I put maybe one or two minutes. Of a not so good video. It's for a kilo teatro. No, no Teatro das Cênicas. It was an international convention of digital arts Sound. called Soundboard. Sound. The way we do it is, of course, we cannot rehearse 42 people at the same time every day, so we, dis we divided in small scenes and uh, small groups were responsible for developing parts of the, the performance. So, and there's a, a little bit of everything uh, um, begin begins. with a table that they, just a table with um, many sensors and process, processors.
regular music with scores and people playing a more traditional way. <coughs> important to say, um, of course there is a, a line that con conducts the, the, the entire performance, the one hour performance, and uh, but you see the, the first <coughs> table they play at the beginning is part of not only a technical research of soldering things, but also uh, Uh, it's part of the, the, the interest of people trying to work with everyday objects transformed in musical uh, instruments. So they try, they, they try to bring something that's conceptual to the, to the performance. Or, um, and I think it's interesting that... <coughs> Uh, some of you will recognize these guys, one of, one of the best computer scientists in Sao Paulo, Fabio Kong, who is playing vibraphone, not programming. He's part of our group, but in this work he's playing vibraphone. And here, uh, I think here is Marcelo Queiroz, who is also from the computer science, and he plays the cello. And here is Nelson Lago, who also <laughs> belongs to the computer departments. Uh, so <coughs> we, we try to, to do this kind of integration. So sometimes they are programming for us, but sometimes they are having fun too. So it's not only hard work. We try to do it in a very uh, light way, I'd say. <coughs> and uh, maybe I, I can show a little bit of this performance. It's uh, transparency is another performance we decided to, to make like a small tour uh, in Europe last year so we <coughs> we gathered uh, six six people six people from the group and during seven or eight months they developed a, developed a performance uh, with a lot of constraints because we had to travel we could not bring a lot of equipment we should play uh, the same thing in very different uh, situations inside a musical hall, a very alternative venue, uh, the concert hall of a university. So different sizes of, and places uh, should be uh, <coughs> uh, useful for the work. And um, we went to, uh, we did five concerts in Europe in April 2000. Uh, 13 and I can show you <coughs> again we have a lot of scenes uh, <coughs> in the, uh, some of them using regular music some of them uh, were duets and trios some of, of them involved with everybody some of them had had a lot of uh, programming involved with music and uh, images and things. Other were based only on uh, written scores. Um, and I guess this. Thank you. 
from one scene to another. And again, <coughs> a bunch of things involved, uh, working on the table, lightning, some programming not so sophisticated. It doesn't matter for us if it's low-tech or high-tech. What interests people, what interests us is the, the, the artistic result. Um, I can see how we are in time. Okay. <coughs> Um, okay, there is this series called Musica. Um, usually, <coughs> it started, uh, I think, in 2005, I guess. Uh, it was a, a, a way of occupying a music department at the university, which was a very traditional department. But people went there to play only uh, uh, or mainly uh, traditional concert music. So we started uh, every once uh, we, we would go to somewhere and, and um, occupy a space doing something that sometimes we would not say that would be music exactly. So that well, why the, the, the name of the series is, is music with a lot of uh, interrogation marks. <coughs> uh, and sometimes we do it inside the departments, but we try always to bring it outside the university. In this picture, it's a performance, the music, Musica says. Uh, it's a, it was made in the, inside the cafeteria, cafeteria of the students. <coughs> so they start playing some strange music while the students are eating, having coffee, or playing uh, <coughs> something. 
So you, uh, at the beginning, they were just annoyed by the music, that strange music that were uh, disturbing what they were doing. <coughs> but after some time, you see this guy in the middle, he's actually, he's pretending he's watching the game, but he's actually part of the group, so he has a small mic. And what we are doing is to capture the sound of the players and process. So uh, gradually they start, well, what we are doing is making the music itself. So they start try, start to try to play in a way that the music would um, uh, respond accordingly. So it's a kind of way of uh, calling their attention to the way uh, uh, music could be understood, for example. <coughs> and then I will skip to the last point I would call attention, that is the use of uh, um, this experimental approach. Um, as you saw, uh, well, okay, sometimes we do regular music too, which is scores, regular instruments, etc. Etc. But most of, of the time, we are w looking for uh, different ways uh, of producing music and of um, interacting with the people who are uh, in the audience or are participating in the process. <coughs> so we, we call it experimental approach. Maybe we could have a, a better name. And we are working with this kind of tension between the idea of experiment in science where you are always looking for control and precision and the idea of experimentalism in art where uh, you are always assuming risk and failure, noise and etc. Yes, <coughs> um, just uh, uh, to underline three different types of the you, three different uses of the concept of experiment and experimentalism <coughs> that we try to mix together in the works. So it's kind of conceptual uh, thinking, but we try to actually uh, reflect on the use of these three uh, ideas, like this experiment in the scientific lab, uh, the experience that we uh, <coughs> Uh, the way we, we experience sound and music and experimentalism itself, the way we try to, to break something that is very well established. And of course, if you look to any, any part of, of the music history, we'll see these three uh, <coughs> um, elements some way pervading different types of music composition. Okay, <coughs> then I will quickly show uh, uh, in this idea of experimentalism <coughs> um, one of them is uh, more like how to bring the lab to music and the other one is to do the opposite. So the first one is related to the, this concert series that we call Network Concerts, which is basically putting people to play together in different places or, or sometimes different countries. So there is some uh, technological stuff that we had to develop. Uh, sometimes we developed inside the, inside the group, sometimes we used uh, tools that are already available, but we created some tools to <coughs> um, um, make concerts with groups, um, that are located in different parts of the world. And the idea was not only to test the, uh, the technology we were using, but to, re uh, to think or to reflect about the uh, internet or the network connections as um, uh, a media or environment for music creation. So again, the artistic project is, uh, comes before the, the technical one. So 
those are the first experiments with SARC, which is uh, a center, uh, partner center in at the Queen's, Uni Queen's University in Belfast. Um, so besides connecting people here, uh, okay, I don't see the mouse, but here we have people playing uh, at USP in Sao Paulo, and on the screen we saw uh, we see uh, another player playing in Belfast, and on the other screen we see a graphic interactive score. So there are many many uh, things to work out on, on the on the. Uh, performance here on on the right uh, the score again is a graphical score but it works like a game and musicians from one side and the other side must uh, uh, win the game let's say musically win the game uh, here I think this was one of the last ones yeah it was this year what well, was not programmed by us but we only took part in it. Uh, I just saw that Irkan was presented there from the second picture, but people from different <coughs> parts of the world uh, <coughs> played together. And uh, I think I will skip the, the examples, so uh, if we have time, then I can show you more uh, examples and try to, to go to the conclusions. Um, uh, I, again, technical aspects were not the focus, but uh, we try to develop uh, the main uh, creative uh, aspects of the, the works. And um, Jonathan, Sekeka Termini. In quantos minutos? Five minutes? Yeah. Two minutes? Yeah. Two seconds? <laughs> as much as you can. Okay. Um, I can, well, I can go quickly uh, through this example, which is uh, work for a former PhD student. Uh, called Compro Auri. It refers to main plates, those guys who were um, plates. It's very common in this down, downtown of Brazil. Here they are selling gold, so <laughs> you go to them buying. if you need money. Huh? They're buying. So. Yeah, they are, yeah, they are buying gold. <laughs> if you need money, you take something you have made of gold and give them, they, they will give some money back. <laughs> and, uh, Julian, who was the author of the, the, the piece, uh, invite people to sell, not gold, but their listening. So he would pay one euro for everybody to, who was interested to put a uh, headphone and listen during three minutes for one of his pieces. So he inverts the, the idea of the common idea. of selling music, so he buys the, the listening the guys. So this is one of the performances at the relevant festival in 2013 uh, uh, Berlin. Okay. So uh, <coughs> has to do to, to the exploring of new ways or new possibilities of um, uh, understanding music, not only making and listening, mm -hmm. but understand what music means. Um, okay, last example, uh, Music 9. It's the, the first time we did, it was in May this year, uh, it's the first time we did uh, a work with pieces composed by, uh, that were pre-composed, that we, we didn't compose ourselves. So we tried to, um, we made um, a selection of verbal scores, uh, event scores, so scores that um, some of them are classical uh, scores of this kind of repertoire, 
and we, we select some of them and again we had like 30 people that occupied a house and each room of the house had uh, one or more performance most of them running at, at the same time so you could just get in and go through the, the, the houses very common in the 60s and 70s the Fluxus group did it a, a lot of times so again a way of uh, <coughs> not re-performing re a kind of classical uh, piece of the repertoire but uh, a way of putting 30 people together uh, to manage how to do it so it was not only the performance itself but also how to do the, um, the organization, the lightning, the scenery, uh, the programs, program notes, a research about each composer and each piece. Uh, they made a lot, a lot of interviews. So after the, the concert, let's say, <coughs> we, we have not only the pictures and maybe some re sound recording, but a, a lot of material that the, uh, the students can use in their own work. And I can show you maybe. A small video. It's not a very good record. É a partitura é de uma performance, né? Victor. É uma performance que, teoricamente, você tem um sprint com água, tem um sprint vazio, e a performance é você jogar essa água, tá? Um sprint cheio e um sprint vazio. Essa parte que eu estou fazendo é baseada no meu drip, que é o gotejamento, que criou essa sonoridade do... Não sei se você vai conseguir captar aí. É, a gente vai fazer duas peças ao mesmo tempo, né? uma delas é do Christian Wolff, a Sentinel Stones, final dos anos 60, e nessa peça ele propõe que você faça sons com pedras, tiços de pedras, reposa pedras, ata, mente, ata na mente, explora as pedras com outros.
find them out. Last piece, kind of classical of this repertoire, the great learning. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much. I don't know how we are on, we are on time. We need time for questions or comments. Some questions? I don't know if I have an answer because it usually changes, changes uh, with the people who are involved. So people go there f for doing their PhD yeah. and master. But even even in a more general way, like we are mathematicians or musicians or composers. Or oh well, well, there are a, a bunch of musicians who do some programming, but as musicians, not as programmers, so they are skilled in using PD, Max, and things like that. <coughs> but we have um, like 10, right now, like 10 to 12 people from the computer science department uh, who are really computer scientists. Um, not always they are doing a specific programming for us or with us, the idea is that they do it with us. But sometimes they collaborate, developing some more sophisticated uh, um, uh, software and things like that. But then for the net concerts, we have a, a specific black box to connect people. Um, <coughs> um, we have, for example, um, one guy from the engineering department working with wave field synthesis, which is a way of making spatial uh, um, diffusion of sound so sometimes we can use what he's doing he can you uh, help us to program something so there is some connection but I, I would say that um, um, it varies depending on the work we, we are doing for example this last video is really really low tech of course there's some technology sometimes no technology at all, like stones, but it, 
the idea was to use really low tech. Sometimes we have the help of those guys to, to do something more sophisticated in terms of technology. And does, does um, softwares that are invented, you, <coughs> the, the laboratory has been sanctioned to a development fund, um, like it's fundable when you do these values. Avail. <laughs> um, sometimes yes. Um, when it it becomes really strong and stable to to be available to other people, yes. For example, the first project we did was yes, in room acoustics. It was mm -hmm. a, 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 at that time uh, we had no access to software to measure room acoustics that uh, would be on, in a reasonable price, so they would cost like five, six, ten thousand dollars. So we decided to, 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 to make a good software, but that were free and open access. So this software were available, many people use it, some people here use it, people did their PhDs outside Brazil and other parts of the world using this software. <coughs> um, the software for um, spatialization, for example, was being developed for many years by Regis uh, Farias. It's kind of available. There's a manual, you can download it. It's based on PD, you can, you can use. Um, uh, Flavio uh, Schiavone made it, um, a, a software called Medusa, which I, I don't know if it's available. He just finished his PhD with the software last year, but it was supposed to be available. If it's not now, it's going to be some time, which is a, a black box to connect, connect people, to play together through uh, network connections. And so he's, he's from computer science. Yeah. So there are a few of them that become something like stable and strong enough to, to be put uh, to the public. But uh, most of the, the works are uh, very personal projects. If you see, there are many times there is a table that, which is kind of classical instrument of this type, type, type of approach because every, everybody has a table. You can tap and everything. But uh, for example, Lillian works with her table like for five, six years or something. So every time he puts something else, someone will program something for her and it's growing up. But only her can play that. I, I, if I go there, I can do nothing because she knows how it works. She knows the details. So it's a very personal project. So it depends. Fernando, let, let, let allow me to make a provocative question. Uh, when we see, for instance, the, your colleagues of computer science playing cello and vibraphone, mm -hmm. they are not cellists, not uh, vibraphonists, I, I, I suppose. Uh -huh. What uh, would... Oh, they are or yes. not, let's say, professional. They are not yeah? professional. They play very well. They are not professional. Okay, they, they play the cello They are also. mature, yeah, sure. Okay. No. no. Then, then my, my question, uh, because uh, I, I, I would imagine what, what a cellist that uh, studies 30 years uh, his instrument would say about that, if it's not too risky to, to have an amateuristic result of, of that. Oh, it depends. But, but if, they, may, if may they play vibraphone and cello, I don't know. The no, there are two sides. Some of the pieces are made to be played by amateur. So this is one kind of the way of looking to it. That particular piece, no, it was... It was played uh, by people uh, that know the... One of the guys is Fabio Kong, who studied yeah. percussion uh, at this university uh, the, the, many years ago. He was so, from Piapi too. No? Yeah, he, he was a kind of professional player. Then he decided to stop music and go to computer science. And the other one it was Marcelo Queiroz, who, besides being a, a, a very good mathematician and computer scientist, he took the composition, uh, he graduated in composition at USP a few years ago, so... But he's a cellist, no. Yeah. 
He plays yeah, cello yeah. now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He plays cello way, every week. Anyway, he has is there... But it's, it's, it's an open to to have someone playing cello that doesn't doesn't play cello at all. Not that that piece because that piece uh, uh, demanded someone who <laughs> plays well. But, but in another piece, in the same sure, field, for sure, for sure, it's possible. Totally and, possible. And then it's a it's a dangerous of a maduristic uh, result yes. related to people that are inside the cello 30 years 40 years of his yes. life playing ce the cello I'm, that, I'm now a kind of that's what we are of, looking for of this uh, of this uh, historical uh, uh, approach or, or respect uh, towards <laughs> the, the the writing of music as a composition or to study the instrument as an instrumentist uh -huh. I'm a, a, a little provocative in the sense that it, it provokes me a kind of, of di dialectic uh, uh, questioning. Uh, so they are not playing pa partitas. They are playing music that are made to be played that way. It's completely different. Pro they are not the trying field to. Of improvisation. They are not. No. When when there's an improvisation orchestra and some of them are, well, well in the orchestra would, we have people like like Alexandre Zamichi plays piano in the orchestra. So. Yes, but, but uh, we would not say that it's a composition. That's that's what I I I'm arriving. Some of them. It's music. Would but like composition. Some some of the them uh, like put music with question marks, just to not be confused with traditional composition. So there is this this uh, idea of <coughs> creating this this distinction. Creating some tension and thinking about what what music is and uh, what's the boundary. Can I go until here or I can go up to here? Yeah. Sometimes some people get offended, but it's not our intention. And you talked about the blurred boundary. It's a case in this way. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> when you see Lillian playing the, the desk with image and interacting with more with image and then sound or sometimes both together, well, what, what is that? Is it, is it music? Is it something else? It's drama? It's performance? Or, or experience. Yeah. Well, after, after doing it, f like, well, I do it since the grad graduate study, so after doing for 20 years, 30 years, it's not only experience anymore. I have a repertoire of actions, gestures, procedures, uh, instruments, so it's not something that we are testing uh, from the beginning. But uh, most of, of the works are on the, the, the boundaries of what you call uh, the mainstream of m music, something. Uh, what a comment, not a question. I think this is very interesting, this approach, because you can join people, and I'm, I'm very in favor of uh, make art as not only a way of production, but a way of making people understand each other. And I think your work is good because of it, because you put people from the uh, science, hard science department of artists, and you try to make to talk. I think it's a very challenging approach and very profitable. It's very difficult to talk because sometimes people think that the guys from from the computer science or whatever they do the dirt work. They do the bad things, so they are not artists, we mm -hmm. don't involve them. <coughs> and I don't think, for the way I, I see you when you, see, you showed about Mousson, it's not this way. The way is work together, involve, be involved, and try to do something together. Uh -huh. I think it, I admire this very much, it's very interesting. Yeah, it's, not, it's something that's not easy to... to no, of course not. Yeah. I, because they, after, after the works, they have to, to publish papers in different types of journals and a computer science who publishes at the music journal it doesn't count and, uh, 
uh, the concert doesn't count. But so they have different goals and different interests. So it's, it's difficult to 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 reach a balance. Yeah, I was also interested in this very last presentation. Uh, Said about the evaluation, how 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 is the evaluation? <coughs> uh, somebody coming from the computer science degree who wants to uh, kind of use art and composition as a way of uh, opening new interesting questions in computer science. As I think this was the main idea of using art to really make progress in the field of uh, in, in scientific domain. But then, uh, <laughs> is it? He evaluated uh, thanks to his support to artistic creation, or is something which is completely disjoint? So what I mean, we, we have the same problem a bit in, uh, in our master program at here. Uh, I will speak here uh, maybe tomorrow. Or I don't know if there is a possibility maybe today to show you also something because we are maybe here in the right place to also show. Uh, how we are trying to put together uh, researchers in the field of science, computer science, uh, physics, mathematics, and artistic uh, uh, kind of, uh, yeah, artists, musicians. But then the problem is that in the, in the scientific curriculum, uh, they don't yeah. accept those are your, your <coughs> uh, efforts to do new artistic research can be taking it into account. So there is a kind of uh, schizophrenia, <laughs> I think, yes. uh, which is very bad, uh, but which is somehow accepted no, in, the, in the evaluation process in the yeah. academia. I don't know if, uh, how you do you... Well, we, we were having that with, with Tatiana this kind of discussion a couple of days ago, how the process of evaluation of uh, scientific research is kind of schizophrenic. So. Schizophrenic, other way. Yes, but uh, I would say that um, yes, it's a problem. Uh, a concert will not count for the curriculum of um, computer science, or will count very little. Um, and usually, what happens? What I see is when when they start doing. Uh, their career, like uh, the undergrad and master and PhD, they can like split and do both sides, play both games. So they play, they interact, but also, <coughs> but of course, when when they get a job as a professor or something, they they have to to fill up some forms and <coughs> get some. Uh, papers in big journals and things become more difficult. But what we try to do is there's something, there's some part of the project that overlaps. So we do together, we try to make uh, some meetings together, but they, people from, from the hard science, let's say, they keep their own uh, projects, individual projects. And usually those projects are related somehow to music or to sound or something like that and they have the possibility of having composers or musicians or performers or something that go there and help them to to guide their research <coughs> not to have only a new piece of software that so to touch fundamental you, questions yes uh -huh. Oh, I, I, I developed a new software that is well, similar to the sound, but it's not exactly, it has another button here and something. And you publish a paper, get your PhD, and, and no, no one is going to use it. So we, we try to, it's, it's like a compromise. You have to, to take part in the group and uh, do some contribution and try to get some contribution too. But you, we know that they are different areas, uh, there's a, a few exceptions, but usually they keep their own uh, works, uh, the specific works related to their specific areas. Uh, um, 
it's easier for us to 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 enter more technical areas in terms of curricula because uh, maybe in music a paper published in a good computer science journal would be taken into account but the opposite way I think it's not possible yet okay thank you very much